What's up guys, Sebastian here with Walgreens Vintage. Today, we'll be talking about the most elusive guitar sound in guitar history, the B note tone. Guitar players have been trying to figure out how to get that sound for 50 plus years. Many have tried and few have succeeded. Um, here, we'll be attempting to you know, recreate that sound at three different budgets, basically. So, a little bit of history. In the mid 60s, a young man by the name of Eric Clapton has just left the band The Yardbirds and is making a name for himself as one of the most prolific guitar players of his generation. Eric went ahead and ordered a custom amplifier from the Jim Marshall Workshop, later known as the Blues Breaker. Eric had gotten his 1960 Les Paul after being influenced by Freddie King and his gold top uh, Les Paul with P90s. And he went ahead and recorded with John Mayo on the Blues Breakers, where Eric was to set the example for what was to become one of the most iconic rock and roll pairings of all times, a Gibson Les Paul through a Marshall. Some of the sounds that came out of that record to this day are some of the best, just most iconic guitar, electric guitar sounds ever to be produced. The name of this guitar comes after the John Mayo and the Blues Breaker records, uh, where Eric Clapton is showing on the front cover reading the, the Beano uh, comic book. It really set the, the setting stone for what was the quintessential blues tone at the time. It really took the world by surprise and it was imitated by many, many uh, guitar players after that. I mean, to this day, a Les Paul through a Marshall is a staple in, in rock and Eric Clapton was the first one to set that example. Today, we'll be attempting to recreate that magical tone at three different budget points. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hear how the first rig sounds. So the first setup that we'll be looking at is the most budget friendly of the three options that we'll be showing today. This is an Epiphone Les Paul Studio and I'm running it through the Marshall MG15. And let me tell you, for the rig that it is, it offers so much value. This guitar is incredible. I can speak for everyone in this room that we're all mind blown by how good this sounds. The guitar plays really, really well. The neck pickup sounds glorious and it's such a good value instrument. The Marshall MG15 has that classic Marshall sound and for being such a small solid state combo, it sounds huge. We're running it just like Clapton did, bass all the way up. Uh, we're rolling off the treble a little bit to take off a little bit of that harshness and then mids at about two, three o'clock. Um, the amp, it's also really loud. We gotta say that that's a big secret in the B note tone. You really gotta get you gotta really push some air. And for a small amp like this, it gets to a reasonable volume. It's not ear bleeding loud, but it's maybe a little bit louder than practice uh, levels. Again, this is an awesome combination. Let's go ahead and see if we can get some Bino tones out of it. <laughs> Thank you. 
So as you can hear, it sounds glorious. For such a, an affordable package, you're getting some amazing tones out of this. Again, Epiphone Les Paul Studio and Marshall AMG 15. Let's go ahead and check out the next rig. So moving on to the second rig, here we have a Gibson Les Paul Standard 60s model and then a Marshall SV20 Studio Vintage. These two are amazing. It's a big step up from the previous rig and it sounds very close to the Beano tone, at least in the room. It's just really, really nice. I love this guitar and I love this amp because they combine more modern elements with the best of that vintage sound and characteristics. So starting off with the amp, the SV20 is based on a plexi head scaled down to 20 watts of power. Now, if 20 watts is still a little bit too much, you can also take it down to five. And the thing is that with this type of amps, just like the original 1962 model, uh, later known as a blues breaker, they don't have a master volume. So the only way to get drive out of them is to really crank them. And they're not quiet amps. They're kind of hard to tame. And even at five watts, it's still pretty loud. But hey, again, that's a big part of the that Beano tone. There's a reason why Eric Clapton got tinnitus from the, the John Mayle uh, sessions. And that's because these amps are loud, but that's how they sound. We've also tried to mimic uh, some of the miking techniques that were used in the studio back then. Um, you know, there's, there's the rumor that Clapton kind of like fought the engineers to mic up the amps his way. They wanted to do a close miking technique and Clapton wanted to replicate what someone would hear in the audience. I kind of like put the mics far back to how it would sound, uh, you know, a few feet behind like if you were on, on the audience. So what we've done here, it's a hybrid of both uh, techniques. We have an SM57 closer to the cabinet, and then a Newman TLM-103 about two feet back from the amp, just to like kind of like get both sounds and blend them so you guys hear how it sounds in the room, but then also how Clapton would have wanted it to sound in the studio. It's a great combination. The guitar is incredible. This, uh, this Gibson Les Paul standards are fantastic. Uh, the 1960 edition has a thinner neck with some specs from the, the 60s, like this Grover tuners, the reflect top knobs and it's a wonderful guitar it sounds amazing it plays really really well it's very balanced in weight and it just roars through this amp so let's go ahead and play it for a bit <laughs>
So as you can hear, this is a step above from a previous rig. It sounds amazing in the room. It, it really gets that, you know, saturated Marshall tone, that classic Beano sound. And it's incredible. This amp is a monster. And paired with a Les Paul like this one, it just sounds like Beano. It's, it's amazing. And it's just really, really a good, um, more professional option if you're looking to get that classic Beano sound. Let's go ahead and jump to our final rig. All right, guys, we've made it to the last rig that we'll be reviewing today. Here I have a 1958 Gibson Custom Shop Murphy Lab Light H Les Paul. And this thing is insane. Now, I know what you're thinking. It is not a 1960, but listen, this is as close as you can really get to that. Most bursts are very similar. So I think we're gonna be able to nail that tone. Now, the amp that we're using is a reissue Marshall 1962 Super Tremolo, which is very similar to the 1966 uh, Bluesbreaker that Clapton used back then. And yeah, we're surrounded by glorious tones and very, very, very loud sound. So let's go ahead and play for a bit. Alright guys, thank you for making it to the end of the video. My ears are bleeding. I won't be able to hear for the next three days, but hey, this was so worth it. I've had so much fun playing through all of this amazing gear. If you like any of these rigs, they're all available in our website. You can find the links down below in our description. If you guys want to visit us, we're located in the area of Wynwood in Miami, Florida. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on Instagram. My name is Sebastian, and I'll see you guys in the next one.